wanted to talk about Horizon Herbs again. And actually, a few different seed companies that I absolutely adore. I wanted to hit them all in the same spot. But first, Horizon Herbs. So if you want roots or plants or seeds for some reasonably exotic medicinal plants, they're the place to go to. Now, they're not called Horizon Herbs anymore. They're called Strictly Medicinal Herbs. And um, I just can't say enough good things about them. I'm going to put in some clips of the herbs that I've grown from their seeds. They're as inexpensive as any other seed company. And so I do use a lot of their seeds because sometimes herbs can be a little finicky. A lot of times they're tiny. And so I like mass plant them and then the few that survive and come up and have the right conditions I plant out and I let them go to seed. And, and that's how I start my permaculture medicinal patches. The other companies I wanted to talk about was Coldstream Farm for my wild crafting wild fruit trees that are just really part of my permaculture uh, food system but also part of improving my soil. Coldstream Farm, they're in Michigan. I absolutely love them and um, they're very healthy and most of the trees start at like a dollar 50 a piece because you, you you buy them you can buy them potted but I buy them bare root let's see who else was there um let's see um honeyberry USA I get my bush cherries and my honeyberries from them and when I first started my channel they did a free giveaway with me and those trees that I got from them that are really bushes honeyberries like a blueberry and the carmine crimson and the crimson crimson carmine and other types they're 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 not a pie cherry they're a bush cherry and they are hardy down to a zone two um so i really like them i haven't had any fruit off of them yet but they are thriving and i'm happy about that who else is there if you really want fancier wild crafting trees and fruit trees go to rain tree they are astronomically more expensive than Coldstream Farm, but they do a good job. And who else was there? I think that was it that I can think of that's kind of unusual. Oh goodness, I need it to stop. Um, so I'm going to show you some clips of all these different trees so that you can kind of see where they came from and what they look like and what they're used for. And hopefully you like this video, so make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Okay guys, I'm going to try and show you the bed at the same time as you see my face. I know you prefer those. They have a little more personality, so I might need to kneel down. So, the, this is my perennial herb bed. I started everything in boxes, and that's to keep the weeds from being able to get through until the perennials are established. So, I have parsley, I have some kohlrabi. These ones obviously are not necessarily herbs, but I had some empty, empty spots where some herbs had been, and by planting something else, it uh, keeps weeds from getting in. It, it make, I make sure that that space gets used. But for other things, I have self-heal, astragalus, um, Russian and official um, comfrey. And I did want to give you a tip with comfrey. You don't put it in deep punctures, I for you don't use comfrey in deep punctures because what it'll do is it'll heal the surface of the wound, but the inside of the wound will still have um, not healed, which means that if there's any gunk or bacteria or anything in there, it will close the wound but not heal the wound fully, just the surface. So you use comfrey on shallow cuts, shallow cuts that don't go deep, no punctures. If you're going to take it internally, you need to take official comfrey, not Russian comfrey. It needs to be official because it has less of the toxins in it that can actually hurt you. So use comfrey internally with caution. Make sure to do your homework on your herbs. What else do I have? I have borage. And I am going to have to, I'm going to have to get in here without my face, guys. More self-heal. Butter burr. These little white flowers here that are coming up on these stalks, that's valerian. You use the root. It is for 
uh, helping you sleep really well. It needs to be taken with passion flower. Otherwise, it'll give you nasty dreams. Um, let's see, what else do I have in here that you can't see anymore? I also have some camas root in here. Mullion. Lemon balm. And then I'm always trying to get elecampane to survive. And it just never wants to survive. I don't know why. Um, but I really want elecampane to survive because it's supposed to be really, really good for lungs. Anyway, so you can see that I have all of my perennials stacked in together with also some um, edibles. And I always, always, always go for that bindweed. Anytime I see it come up, I just pluck it right out. That way I always am in the habit of plucking it first thing. Because bindweed is the one thing on our property that's a weed that will take over with any kind of water. I also have sorrel in here. That's sorrel. It's really good for heat stroke if you get way too hot. And I know I'm not supposed to, I know I'm talking about perennials. Anyway, I get it from medicinal, strictly medicinal herbs. It used to be horizon herbs. That's where I get all my medical um, herbs. And that motherwort, I also got that from horizon herbs. And then on the side, I have nettles. I use the nettles and the comfrey and everything else in my special concoction. So in here, I have ginkgo biloba. Can't see it because it's surrounded by comfrey. Right there. My perennial garlic bed, raspberries. I've mulched everything deeply with rabbit manure and I won't have any weeds come through. Weeds, to my understanding, don't really tolerate high nitrogen situations very well. There's my little leaf linden. It's supposed to be really good for tea. Again, lots of comfrey around it. This is, I have a lot of water here. And so having the comfrey uh, is good because then I can use the comfrey for um, mulching. Let's see, what else do I have close? And I did want to do a little shout out for my girls. So they saw me making my books and they decided that they wanted to make books for my Etsy store. Let's, let's see, what does it say? Let's look, let's look at, from, at some pictures. Let's look at some pictures. And so they made picture books. For, so anybody who would like to buy one of their picture books, they're really excited about being, um, about being writers. So they're made, especially Kaya, she's making these all the time. So go to our Etsy store. Also on the Etsy store, we have, I just started doing some hand embroidered family wall hanging. So I go and I make a custom wall hanging with needlework of your family. And I'm putting up gardening books, homesteading books that include my PDFs with them that you can print out for yourself. I don't print them out because it would cost, I would have to charge $100 for these books if I printed them myself. So I include them as a PDF for you to read and print as you want to, but I hand make a cover for your homesteading book and add uh, place dividers and everything. And the PDFs are in a format so that you just take them to the printers and you print them up. So. Those are all the projects that we are involved in right now as far as new stuff on the Etsy store. And um, Brad at Big Family Homestead is coming up with a really fun project that will be fun to announce here in a little bit. Not going to announce it yet because we don't have all the kinks worked out. But I love you guys and we'll talk to you later.